Exclusive. April 4th, 2022. Habcast 274. Episode 274. Let's go. Of course, I have a few things to share with you guys. An evening of reflection. Shall we? Gas theft ring in Florida stole at least $60,000 of fuel from stations to resell at half price. When big government, when big energy, when big politics are telling people who just need to get back and forth to work that their hands are tied, people are going to start finding ways to fix their own problem. Six men accused of stealing thousands of dollars of gasoline from Florida gas stations have been arrested, officials said Monday. Hillsborough Sheriff Chad Cronister said Operation Empty Tank <laughs> concluded last week when Luis Alcade Hernandez, Albert Aleman Gonzalez, Nestor Flores Rodriguez, Javier Penate Berbe, Jesus Andres Perez Cueto, and Denise Vasquez Sosa, and that's the way we all became the Brady Bunch, <laughs> were arrested. Their ringleader, William Panate Arancibia, is still at large, Chronister said. Operation Empty Tank began in February when over the course of two days, two Circle K gas stations discovered they had $25,000 in fuel shortages, according to a release from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. After reviewing surveillance cameras, each gas station observed the same strange behavior where a group of seven trucks would continually cycle through a single gas pump for more than 12 hours at each station, the statement said. This was clearly very well thought out and well executed, but you can't for one second tell me that there wasn't somebody that works there in on this and collecting some of the rewards. Detectives discovered that the suspects were breaking into gas pumps and installing homemade devices that disabled the mechanism calculates the cost per gallon for pennies per gallon or in some cases no money at all seven suspects were able to dispense thousands of dollars of gasoline said the sheriff's office in a statement <laughs> investigators determined that the suspects were stealing gas from stations all over tampa bay while we have identified just over sixty thousand dollars in gas theft from seven documented events, we believe these men are responsible for far more money and theft due to their operation running nearly every day of the week. Yes, and they're rotating trucks out daily for like 12 hours. Chronister said this was very clearly an organized crime ring, and these suspects were not new to the business. You want to talk about messing up a package? How do you explain that someone gave you 10,000 gallons worth of gas and you only got 5,000 gallons worth of money. <laughs> but Chronister said the men weren't doing truckers a public service. Don't think for a minute that these suspects were tampering with the gas pumps in order to ease their own burden on everyday drivers. It kind of exactly sounds like that's what they were doing, Chronister said. No, they were in this only to line their own pockets. Why not take the risk and get paid? The six men were arrested after detectives caught them stealing gas. They are charged with racketeering, conspiracy to commit racketeer influence and corrupt organizations, grand theft, and accessing electronics without authority. According to the sheriff's office, they could also face additional charges. Worker backed for walking off unfinished job after boss denied overtime pay. No favors, no freebies. Centers were quick to support an employee who left a job site unfinished after their boss said they would not be paid overtime. Especially if you're a good employee, these employers are always looking for ways to see what type of extra they can get out of you. If you're a bad employee, they just can't wait for you to leave. <laughs> the anonymous employee, known only as Snoop Pickles, 
1731 posted about their situation on Reddit. It had to be Reddit. Popular malicious compliance where it received nearly 18,000 votes and 300 comments in 17 hours, many praising the employee for not letting their boss take advantage of them. As they will every chance they get. This comes as the U.S. saw a mass exodus of employees in 2020 and 2021, most of whom said they left to pursue better benefits or better pay, and several countries are opting for a four-day work week to enhance work-life balance. In the post titled, Company Refuses to Pay Me Overtime, I Left Job Site with Job Incomplete and Client Unhappy. <laughs> The employee explained that the situation occurred a few years ago as they were just starting to wake up to companies abusing employees. The employee wrote, the employee said they were a sales rep and worked for a technology company, two-way radios and alarms to be specific. The post read, the employee said they trained themselves because there was not enough technical staff, which is already not your problem if you're a sales rep. They asked the lead technician to teach them a few things and began doing most of their clients' installations. So off the rip, you're already doing this company a favor. They should be thankful. If not, they should be paying you more. They explained that the manager of the technical department was happy with them doing the work and signed off on their timesheets and overtime hours, which averaged between two to five hours a week. If I'm management, I'm excited about this. I have no problems because paying two or three people a few hours overtime as needed is way better than putting a whole nother person on the payroll. It went well for a few months until one day, just before payday, I get called in by the owner. The post read, he had my timesheets for the past few months, which why is there a few months? If there was a problem, it should have been a month or should have been a week. For all that, he asked me what they were, you know what they are, and I gave him an explanation. <laughs> he scratched my OT out, saying sales reps don't get paid OT. The employee tried explaining why they were claiming overtime and that he could ask the technology manager, but he was having none of it. Most people in management think it's impossible for them to make stupid decisions. So go ahead and hire another employee and see what those hours look like in another two or three months. <laughs> a week later, the employee was working on an installation about two hours away from the office. Although they were nearly finished, the employee told the apprentice technician to pack up for the day since he does not get paid overtime. That's right. Client wasn't happy, but understands that I don't get paid to work late. The post read, Nearly 15 minutes later, the owner called and asked why they did not finish the job and said that the client was unhappy. The employee said they would not work late since they do not get paid overtime and said they told the client they would finish the job the next day, as you should. Silence for about five seconds as I assume he realized I was following his express instructions. And there was nothing he can do. The post read, he told me to go back and finish the job and we can talk about it later. Nope. I told him, no, yep. <laughs> Unless he pays me OT, he says he will. I tell him to put it in an email before I will turn back. The owner said he would send the email and the employee turned on their laptop and waited for the email to come through before driving back to finish the job. It doesn't pay to be an asshole if you're a manager because see how you screwed this person out of a few extra hours overtime in this same person. Now you have to ask them for a favor. And basically they're like, fuck you, pay me. I got paid my overtime and never again was there a query over my timesheets or hours booked the post read. <laughs> I was the only rep out of five that got paid overtime because he says something in the United States, a new rule issued by the Department of Labor that became effective in January 2020 made it so employees making less than $684 a week 
are considered non-exempt employees requiring overtime pay for hours worked over 40 in a work week. Exempt employees or salaried employees who make more than $684 a week are not eligible for overtime pay. Comments, always love the comments for the Reddit. They email it before I turn around and go back part was brilliant. Never forget to get it in writing. Exactly. Great job standing up for yourself. Short-sighted and unappreciative management is the worst. And there's a lot more of them than there are of people who actually have a vision in management. Wish you'd taken that to the labor board. They can't refuse to pay for work done. Another comment read, but glad you got it in writing. Man drops bag of cocaine in front of officers at Mon County Hotel. <laughs> a man has been charged after officers found drugs while responding to a suspicious person call at a Monongalia County Hotel. <laughs> what the hell is Monongalia? Where the hell is Monongalia? On April 1st, officers with the Morgantown Police Department responded to a call of suspicious individuals at the Euro Suites Hotel at Chestnut Ridge Road in Morgantown, according to a criminal complaint. I'm going to go on ahead and assume the Euro Suites Hotel is like the Ritz Carlton of the Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> oh, there he is. The pride and joy of the Appalachian Mountains. What did he do? Rub the cocaine on his eyes? The individual who reported the suspicious individuals stated that a male had been wandering in the back parking lot of the hotel and had been seen speaking to another male who had left the lot, officers said. When officers arrived, they made contact with two males in a white Volkswagen Jetta that was parked in the rear lot and not in a parking space, they were able to identify one of the individuals as Jeremy Stickley, 39, of Hagerstown, Maryland, according to the complaint. Officers asked Stickley to exit the vehicle, and as he did so, a clear baggie of white powdery substance fell from his person onto the ground, which officers later determined was crack rock cocaine, officers said. <laughs> <laughs> During an investigation, officers were able to determine that Stickley was in possession of multiple bags of crack, six Xanax bars, four Suboxone strips, 15.3 grams of marijuana, and a set of scales, according to the complaint. Stickley has been charged with possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. He is being held in North Central Regional Jail on $25,000. Man arrested after exposing himself four times on a flight from Seattle to Phoenix. How long is the flight from Seattle to Phoenix? The flight time from Seattle to Phoenix is two hours, 42 minutes. The time spent in the air is two hours, 20 minutes. You had to expose yourself four times as a grown man. You can't sit with your hands folded in your lap. <laughs> I don't even think he had to go to the bathroom. He just kept checking to make sure it was still there. Why aren't we just tasing these people and, and detaining them somewhere? A man is facing felony charges for allegedly exposing and touching himself on a flight from Seattle to Phoenix is two hours, dude. A criminal complaint identifies Antonio Sherrod McGarity as the suspect who was taking Southwest Airlines Flight 3814 this past Saturday. The court record explains the explicit events in detail. Oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the woman in the seat next to him told Phoenix police McGarity began touching himself inappropriately shortly after takeoff and at least four times throughout the first hour of the flight. This is not okay on the ground. Why do these people think that it's supposed to be okay when they're in the air? They should have tased them till his tongue turned into a chicken tender. McGarity allegedly fell asleep after a while. He exhausted himself, which is when the woman told flight crews what happened with photos she took on her phone and moved to another seat. Ew. Phoenix-based FBI agents spoke with McGarity after the flight and say he quickly admitted to what he had done. 
Court records claim McGarity asked the woman for permission. Really? Before the flight took off, she allegedly threw her hands in the air and said it really doesn't matter. The court records also reveal McGarity was aware the woman was taking photos and thought she was comfortable with what he was doing. What the hell is going on on these flights? McGarity also allegedly told officials he thought the whole thing was kind of kinky, according to the FBI. He is now facing charges for lewd, indecent, or obscene acts on an aircraft. KOMO News has reached out to Southwest Airlines, who said the man has been banned for life. <laughs> the situation was reported to crew members while in flight, and the captain contacted law enforcement to meet the aircraft upon arrival. A statement from the airline said, we immediately placed the passenger on our no-fly list, resulting in a lifetime ban from traveling on Southwest. Fun show, fun show, fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up, but I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.